Welcome my friends, today I will show you how to make tropic acid. You may ask why we want to produce tropic acid and the answer is simple. I love growing toxic plants and my favorite one is the Tura. It contains tropane alkaloids and one of them is called atropine. It is pretty toxic yet vital in modern medicine and with tropic acid we can finally make synthetic atropine. To make atropic acid, the precursor to tropic acids, we are going to need the following chemicals. Paraformaldehydes, DMF, potassium carbonate, and phenylacetic acid methyl ester. To start off we measured out about 40.2 ml of methyl phenyl acetate. This chemical is a nicely smelling liquid which has a cress odor. It is also a great solvent for some plastics and it ruined one of my scales. Chemical number 2 is called DMF or dimethylformamide. It smells fishy, is slightly reprotoxic and it will act as our solvent. During the isolation of our product it is great that DMF can be removed using water due to its solubility in it. Chemical number 3 is paraformaldehyde. Normal formaldehyde solution would be unsuited as the reaction needs to be conducted with little to no water present. Paraformaldehyde can be seen as a solid and easy to handle replacement for every time that you need anhydrous formaldehyde. Our last chemical was potassium carbonate and to begin with the preparation everything was simply combined in this beaker. For whatever unsuspected reason the solution turned pink after adding the carbonate. If you know why I'd be pleased if you write a comment. To monitor and control the temperature an electric thermocouple was inserted into the beaker. We needed to maintain the temperature between 75 and 80 degrees celsius for 90 minutes under heavy stirring. Once we began stirring the pink color quickly faded away. Stirring is crucial as the potassium carbonates will not dissolve and to increase the efficiency of the reaction we need a nicely uniform suspension. The reaction taking place can be seen here. Methylphenyl acetate is converted to methyl atropate. The paper I was following can be found in the video description. It was originally meant for ethyl atropate but it should also work here. 90 minutes have passed now. We turned off heating and stirring, allowed the beaker to cool back down to room temperature and added the slimy stuff to a separatory funnel. To remove the majority of potassium carbonates and to get the leftovers from the beaker into the funnel, the reaction mixture was shaken and washed with 75 ml of distilled water. The waste was contained in the bottom layer which was drained off. Next we used our favorite peroxide loving ether, diisopropyl ether, to extract the product. Two extraction steps using 75 ml of diisopropyl ether each were performed. Fortunately for us, DMF and the other contaminants should be poorly soluble in this ether and if they dissolve, we will get rid of them in the next washing step. As the ether layer floats on top, the bottom layer was drained off first into a beaker before transferring the ether to a flask. The stuff from the beaker was added back into the funnel, fresh ether was added and we did a second extraction. To the combined ether layers in this flask about 50 ml of distilled water were added and the flask was capped and shaken. If any DMF dissolved into the ether we should be able to get rid of it in this step. Now we get to the most dangerous step of this procedure. Diisopropyl ether loves forming explosive peroxides and you should thus avoid distilling it if you can. But we had to distill it off. Because our bottle of diisopropyl ether had never been opened before I felt fairly safe as there was never any oxygen in it and it was also stabilized. But for safety reasons I ended up using a water bath which was set to about 80 degrees celsius. Diisopropyl ether has a boiling point of about 69 degrees celsius and we boiled it off within about an hour. After transferring it to another flask we were left with 17.8 grams of methyl atropate which corresponds to yields of about 38.3%. To turn tropic acid into atropic acids we will need to do some more chemistry. On screen you see the classic route using atropic acid directly. As we are using the methyl ester I slightly modified our process. We are going to react the methyl ester directly with the hydrogen chloride gas and are later on going to use sodium hydroxide. With the help of sodium hydroxide we get the sodium salt of tropic acid directly. For the addition of hydrogen chloride we used a massive excess of this gas. I didn't calculate how much gas we needed exactly but ended up using about 70 ml of 37% hydrochloric acid and 70 grams of anhydrous calcium chloride. Just in case if the liquid got sucked back through the straw in the second washing bottle another one was added to prevent suck back into the apparatus. The atropic acid methyl ester was added to the brown gas washing bottle alongside a lot of dichloromethane. The dichloromethane will act as an inert solvent. 
When the hydrochloric acid contacts the anhydrous calcium chloride, hydrogen gas is liberated. At some point, you may need to heat the flask containing the drying agent in order to drive off more HCl, but you could also use concentrated sulfuric acid. You may be familiar with Markovnikov's rule. It says that during the addition of a protic acid like HCl to an asymmetric alkene, the electronegative part gets attached to the carbon with more hydrogen substituents. Well, this is not the case here. We get an anti-Markovnikov product because the oxygens of the carboxylic acid group are pulling on the electrons and the hydrogen thus connects to the more electronegative carbon at the bottom. Without the help of a hot plate, this method of producing hydrogen chlorides would not be viable. Hydrogen chloride was bubbled through our solution for about 30 minutes. As you can see, most of the hydrogen chloride leaves the apparatus without dissolving or reacting, as it is a nasty and corrosive gas, leftovers were let into a canister containing water. It would be boring and quite wasteful if we didn't use at least some of the HCl for another experiment. Therefore a glass syringe was filled with about 60 ml of the gas. When dipped into a beaker of water, this happens. Hydrogen chloride dissolves extremely well in water. This forms hydrochloric acid and we get a vacuum. After about half an hour our silicon tube started leaking and therefore I stopped the hydrogen chloride generation. If it did not leak, I would have continued for about 20 more minutes. The contents of the gas washing bottle fumed profusely. This was due to dissolved hydrogen chloride. To make the desired sodium salt of tropic acid, the dichloromethane solution was added to an addition funnel containing more or less concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. The funnel was allowed to stand with occasional shaking for 3 days. We even got this cool lava lamp like effect. If you listen carefully, you know that we are left with the sodium salt of this acid. To freebase it, we added hydrochloric acid until the solution was slightly acidic. The funnel was gently shaken violently and once the layer settled, the bottom DCM layer was drained into an evaporating dish. Two more washings with about 50 ml of DCM each were performed and the layers were combined in the dish. To evaporate off the DCM gently, a hot plate was set to 52 degrees Celsius and it was boiled off. In the end it looked like this and because it was still liquid, I put it into my vacuum chamber over an hydrous calcium chloride. Even after that, it did not want to solidify and it looked like this. I got it tested in a lab and this weird oil contains about 46% of our product. There's also some sort of ester which the product made with itself and this is likely why this stuff is still liquid. If you want to make tropic acid, you should definitely avoid this route. If you want to make methyl atropates, you might use this route. Because I really want to make some tropic acid, I am going to try a different route in the future. Until then, thanks for watching and I would especially like to thank all of my Patreons because you guys make it possible to film even cooler projects. Thank you so much for the ongoing support.